Welcome to Susan's Kitchen. In this show today, we are doing simple and very quick and very short. We are doing stir fries. I'm going to show you how to do two using the most common, um, you know, most common meats, most common recipes. One is a chicken stir fry. The other one is a beef stir fry. And I'll start with chicken stir fry for now. Start off with your fire. I love stir fries because they're easy. Stir fry is, a, is something that we've borrowed from the Chinese. And you see how they cook their food quick, 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 and then it comes out on the table quickly. And they do it quickly because they've prepped everything ahead of time. They've chopped their onions, they've chopped the da, 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 da. So you're just picking that, picking this, picking, and throwing it into the pot, and and it's done. And the meat is cut in small strips. If you're gonna do meat, you don't have to. Um, and then it cooks quickly. This is sesame oil. Start with that. I'll put a lot of it in. It's not too much, it's about two tablespoons. Next, you get your beef strips. These are beef strips. Now, let me make sure that they're not wet. Not too wet. I also like to wash my meat when I get it. I go to the butchers and I say, you know, give me the chicken breast and cut it into strips. Once they cut it into strips and I come home with it, I like to give it a rinse when I'm gonna use it. Sometimes I just freeze it, straight from the butchers freeze it and take it out when I'm ready to use it. When you're ready to use it, you thaw, and then you, you thaw, and then you give it a rinse. Give it a rinse, all right? And the reason I rinse it is just to clean it so it's not too bloody. Right, I'm gonna turn the fire back up. You need a big flame when you stir frying. I want the chicken first to just cook before I add anything else in there. You can see it's cooking, you can tell you see how meat changes color when it cooks? If it's chicken, it goes from the pink to something white like that. It's telling you that it's cooking. Right, most of them have cooked. They're still not completely done. The next item that goes in is spring onions. Nicely cut, these have been cut diagonal. Spring onions. And then this is pili pili, red chili, fresh. Some ginger. Some garlic. Right, when it's cooked so much, when it's cooked so much, you're gonna add in just a little bit of water. And soy sauce, this is soy sauce. Usually I like to, because sometimes if it's sat in the cupboard for a long time, you haven't used it, uh, you get some sediments settling at the bottom. So. I like to give it a shake. You 
you need about, a, uh, for this amount of chicken, maybe a tablespoon and a half of soy sauce. Now, when you use soy sauce, go slow on, on the salt, because soy sauce is very salty, very salty. Right. It smells like chicken, it smells really nice, and soy sauce really brings out very nice uh, smell and taste. I think almost coming to the last of the ingredients. This is Nut Fields cashew nuts. Cashew nuts are my best nuts, my favorite. I love them, they're so nice. And uh, I like these ones because they come ready broken, you see that? You get, they're sort of halved, some of them, they're sort of, some are cut in half, and you know, they're broken. And you sprinkle in there. So, apart from eating your nuts, Apart from eating your nuts right out of the packet as a snack, you can do some cooking with them too. They're really good. That's nut fields. Right. And all this time it's still cooking, right? That chicken is still in there and it's still cooking. And the flavors are mingling. And now we've added cashew nuts into it. And when you do a stir fry, you never want it too wet. It, it shouldn't be sitting in a lot of gravy. It's supposed to be a little bit on the drier side. This is something you can do when you get home and you're tired, or on a Sunday when you're just feeling lazy and you don't want to do much cooking, you don't want to rest. If you've got your ingredients done, it's just throwing them on the fire. It's good, it's fast. Right. Finally, I've got some, some pasta. This is pasta. And I had boiled this ahead of time. And I drained it and cooked it. Not completely through, it's not, it's not mushy because it's gonna cook in here a little bit. Right, and then you drain it and you put it right in there. And then give it a toss. That's nice, it's gonna taste good. And the fire is still on high because stir fries are quick cooking. This is done. This is done, something that you can do quickly. That didn't take me long at all. I won't put any pepper in it because it's got chilies in it already. And this is done. Okay, I'm gonna take a break. Please stay tuned and I'm gonna show you how to do the beef strips and something else a bit later. I'll be back in a moment, stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Susan's Kitchen and we are doing stir fries today. Stir fries are quick. It's a Chinese style of cooking and you've got all your ingredients laid out just like this and then you're cooking in a wok, you know, the wok is the karai, yeah, and or a frying pan of course if you don't have a wok. Earlier, if you missed that, I just made a chicken and cashew nut stir fry. This one is a beef stir fry and in this beef stir fry, uh, I've got the beef strips here. Just simple cooking, simple and quick things that you can do. And then you can eat it with anything. Eat it with a piece of chapati, a piece of bread, some, some rice, um, ugali. Ugali is very nice, especially with this one. Ugali is really nice. So you can eat it with what you like. Over here, I have a nor meat marinade. And it's, 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 a, it's a powder, see? I don't know if you can see through that, but it's a powder. 
and it's already seasoned for you and it's got all the goodness and all the all the taste and flavors in there and this is a when you're running short of time this is a great thing to to use it's a great thing to use because we're, sometimes we're busy and you don't always you don't always have time to come home maybe and do a homemade marinade so this is a real quick one something nice to do so you take your meat marinade put it in a little water you follow the instructions at the back it's got some good instructions on the back sometimes they even give you recipes at the back so that's handy i like that and you mix it make sure it's all dissolved you pour that in a bigger in a bigger bowl bigger bowl because you need the space to mix it up and then you've got your beef strips you go to the butchers and tell them give me beef strips you know and they do they cut it for you which is so nice it's so nice so you don't have to get home and start doing it all and then this has come from the fridge so it's got some um, uh, you know it's it's defrosted and it's got some liquid in it i want to get the liquid out then it goes right in here it goes right in there into the marinade now the meat marinade from from Noor. there we go and then what i do is just jump in with my hands and give it a mix and what the idea for this is that you give it a mix so that it is all coated all the meat has got a little bit of that marinade on it that's nice and this is an all-purpose marinade it could, you can use it on different types of meat yeah mutton beef lamb goat would be nice right now what you would do when you make a marinade what you do is you soak it all up in the marinade, make sure it's all covered nicely in the marinade. And then you want to leave it a minimum of about a half an hour in the marinade because the whole purpose of the marinade is that it, you want it to penetrate into the meat. So you need to give it a little time uh, to do so. If you are in a big rush, this is still good. It still works because, um, you know, for example, if I did it right now, which I will, it's still good because you've got uh, the marinade sort of, it's coating the meat and you'll still get the flavor. But really, if you, wanna, if you want the marinade to really penetrate, let it sit for a little while before you cook it. Okay, Chinese cooking uses a lot of sesame, sesame oil and peanut oil. In the first recipe that I did, the first uh, dish that I cooked, I used sesame oil. In this one, I'm gonna use peanut oil and they make a distinct difference to the dish. I'm gonna add a bit more because we don't have any a bit more oil. This is about maybe two, three tablespoons of oil, of the peanut oil. And this oil gives the food just a, a whole special uh, flavor. It really does. Um, so you can, of course, you can leave this out and you can decide to just use your vegetable liquid oil from, you know, maybe Elianto or something like that. That also works, but you, you're going to miss out on the flavor that, that the peanut and the sesame give you. Right, the oil is hot. You've let it sit at least a half an hour. If not, it's okay. It'll still taste good. Yeah. Spluttering. Do it on high fire. Keep your fire up. I have quite a bit of meat in my wok. 
And so every minute, half minute, I give it a stir. Because then sometimes what will happen, the, the meat will cook together and sort of stick. As it cooks and coagulates, you can, you know, you can separate it, so it's not going to be so bad. Okay, when it gets to about this point, when it, where you're not seeing a lot of red, a lot of pink in the meat, you add in your vegetables. I've got red peppers and green peppers cut in long strips. You see that thickness in the, in the bubbles over here? That's from the marinade. It's smelling really nice. So you put your veggies in. So now you just want this to, to cook some more because the meat's still not quite done and you want the vegetables to soften just a little bit and then it'll be almost done. We'll be right back. Well, we've come to the end of the show and it's always a sad place for me because I enjoy doing these things so much. Today we did two wonderful dishes. We did stir fries and stir fries are quick, they're easy if you've got your ingredients together. That's how it should be so that you're just frying them and putting them all together. And these are dishes that you can give a guy, especially the chicken. Remember the chicken we did earlier on? It's got cashew nuts in it. And then the beef stir fry that we did later with the red peppers and uh, green peppers in there. That's got some sesame uh, seeds in it. Those are going to be loved by the guys, uh, especially if your guy is a carnivore <laughs> and he likes lots of meat. Uh, something like this will go down really well with him. So something else that's going to go down well with, with, um, with this kind of a dish is what we call a shandy. A shandy is, I think, ori originally from England. It's, it's, a, it's a mix between a lager, which is alcohol, and lemonade. And the proportions are half-half. So you, if you use, you know, so you, you know, one-one, sorry, one-to-one. One. So if you, have a, if you have a mug of the lager, then you've got a mug of the, of the lemonade. And what you do, you start with the lemonade, okay? And you pour the lemonade into some, let me do it over the sink, I think that's better. Let's do it right here, so in case it, it leaks out, if it spills, we're good. You start with the lemonade at the bottom. You put that in there. And the reason you start with the lemonade first is so that when you pour the beer in, the lager, uh, it, it helps to stop it from coming all the way up, frothing up, yeah? So then you do that. I love how beer looks really nice, doesn't it? It looks really nice. Look at those bubbles. And that froth at the top there, the foam. Right, then you pour this into here. Okay. <laughs> I'll take this one. Then once you've done that, you give it a stir. And this is very refreshing. It's very nice for those people. Maybe you, you don't like beer very much, but you might be able to handle this because it dilutes that strong beer taste. Give it a stir. And then pour it out. 
If you don't have lemonade, you can use something like a soda, 7-Up is okay. You can use a Sprite, you can use ginger ale. Ah, that's a foam from the, that's enough. Yeah. So you can use soda if you don't have the, the lemonade. So I'm gonna call for someone from the crew. Uh, they're all around me, you know. You guys don't see them, but there's a lot of people behind me uh, bringing this whole program together. I'm going to call one, one of them out to join me and have a taste. Jaroge, will you come and join me? Mihai, how are you doing? Hi. How's it looking in the back, in the back scenes over there? Is good. it looking good? Yeah. I'm starving. <laughs> all right. Good. I'm yeah. happy. Good. We're going to eat the food later. Yeah. Me so and you. So I start on and this. everybody else. But I want you to taste this and tell me if... if you drink beer. I'm assuming. I'm yeah, assuming yeah. you drink beer. Well, Do you this, drink beer? This, this, this is this. This, this is what the beer does. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, have a sip. What do you call this? This is a shandy. S H A N D Y. Origin England, huh? Yes. And it's a, a very refreshing drink. They they do it like in the summer, uh, when you know when it's hot. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be refreshing and nice. Okay. Um, I mixed it with lemonade, yeah. but you can mix it with a soda instead. All right. All right. Uh, not not a dark, not a cola drink, but a, a Seven Up or a Sprite or a ginger ale. Yeah. Right. Tell me, will you have a sip and tell me you're my guinea pig? You know. Some more? No, tell me. Well, yes, there is some more. We can make some more it's, together. Yeah, it's more. It's more but directed. tell me, no, tell me seriously. If you didn't like it, just tell me you didn't like it. Was it nice? It, it's, it's, it's got this lemon, it's, it's like lemon taste. So it actually tones down the beer taste. Yes. So someone who doesn't really like beer can take it comfortably. I want some more. Okay, <laughs> cool. Just Let just me. No, 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 that's good. The, the, we'll do some more. We'll do some yeah, more. Yeah. We'll, we've got a little in here which yeah. you can finish. Yeah? I like it. And I'm then glad. it's uh, it's it's um, it's not too sweet. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And from from the lemonade. Yeah. 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 And because I like beer, I like that tangy, yeah. uh, frothy thing. Yeah. It still has the froth. Yeah. And a slight tanginess. Yeah. It's something you can do it for when you've got guests and all that, and yeah. you have a mixture of people. People who take wine, others who have beer, and you basically have an all-round mix. It's like you're getting in the middle of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad. Hey, thank you. Okay. That's good. Thank you very much. Caribbean. We're going to wind, sign off now. Yeah. We're signing off. We're signing off. Thank you so much for watching the program and for staying tuned. My name is Susan Kamau. Uh, for these recipes, please go to the website. My website is www.kenyankitchen.co.ke and get the magazine. It's called Kenyan Kitchen and it's a beautiful magazine. And please write in to me and talk to me. I promise to respond. I promise to respond. All right. And um, well, I'm going to sign off and we'll see you next time. <laughs>